Welcome to Room Service. I'm Sarah Richardson. Are you looking to express your inner sense of sophisticated urban style? Then here's a plan to give a downtown apartment uptown appeal. With mid-century touches like leather, marble, and steel, an inspiring look at the design of sensuous flatware, and some sparkle for intimate dining. We'll turn this place into a modern mix of the classics, and it's only on room service. This is a typical apartment like many you've seen before. It's in a high-rise building in a great downtown location. It has vertical blinds and typical sort of 1980s broadloom. Those are two of the first things that we're planning on changing. What are some of the good things? Well, it gets lots of light and it's a fairly standard layout. In fact, it's quite similar to many of the new loft and condominium developments that we see going up all over the city. So what we're going to do here is we are going to bring it up to date and we're going to make it sleek and sophisticated. The first thing we're definitely going to do is pull up the carpet. Hopefully, hopefully, the floors underneath will be in good condition, but you never know. Another thing we're going to do is paint. Definitely paint is in order here. What I think right now I'd really enjoy is something to make it look a little bit bigger, something calm, something soothing, something that also makes the room appear a little bit larger. The color is sort of a taupey, coffee, mocha kind of color. And I think that it would seem larger and more open if we chose a more serene palette. I'm thinking more along the gray tones. We're going to take inspiration from a couple of classic modern pieces that our client has acquired over the years. We have a pair of Mies van der Rohe Barcelona chairs. We have a really nice teak credenza here that holds the television and a set of stacking dining chairs. Other than that, basically everything is up for grabs and headed out to be replaced by sleeker lines, cooler colors, and a more contemporary feel. We're going to address the dining room, of which right now there is none. There's just the stacking chairs. So I think a table is key. I'm thinking somewhat sparkly. You'll see what I mean later on. Definitely new drapes, a whole bunch of touches, keeping in mind overall that at some point a new home or condominium or loft may be purchased, in which case it's always good if you're a renter to stay mobile and be able to take it all with you. Sleek and modern, crisp and classic, that's our approach to contemporary interiors. As clear and refreshing as the classic cocktail, neat and sophisticated is the only way to go. We are adding a nod to the past. Elegant, classic designs on modern life add depth to our scheme with elements of black that are anything but basic. And finally, we'll introduce a touch of polish for added sparkle as we go for a dynamic mix of old and new that's all about the best of urban style. Sometimes furnishing a room involves hitting the streets to see what you can find and pulling it all together. Other times it's more about coming up with a creative vision and then seeking out the artisans that can help make it become a reality. That's where I am right now. I'm at a custom metal fabrication shop and if you can imagine it, they can build it. I'm standing here beside this is a light fixture that's actually on its way to a chic boutique in New York City. It's a little large for our space but it's reminiscent of a bird's nest and it's all, it looks sort of just like spun metal and it's absolutely Absolutely amazing. Now let's go inside and see what they've done for us. That's it. Those are my tables. They look terrific. Thank you. Now tell me what these are made of. Uh, a cold rolled steel, which is a, a finer, a finer version of, of this regular hot rolled. Okay, because normally when I think of any sort of metal work, it's sort of got this, is this a, what is this coating that's on it? It's like a scale or a slag. It's a result of the uh, steel cooling quickly, whereas this is rolled when it's cold, and so it's, it's dimensionally a lot more stable. These edges are flatter, and they're not as round on the corners here. 
Now I should just explain what these are. I have uh, asked Calvin to make me these tables. They are going to go on either end of our sofa. We've ordered a custom sofa and I was not able to find what I was looking for and I wanted something that was a little bit deeper than it was wide so that it would sort of hug in underneath the arm and we wanted something with a really clean line. So Calvin, when I think of ironwork normally, I think of sort of the rough welded joints, all that. This looks more like stainless steel. What's sort of the difference between them? In terms of price? Yeah, is there a difference the, in price or the what's stainless the stainless steel will be at least three or four times more. The material itself is worth more money. Wow. So okay. if you work with the cold rolled steel and treat it just like stainless, the result is that uh, it's it's much less expensive because because you're not paying for that all that stainless steel. And we just use the same equipment that you use on stainless steel and you get that nice line, right. that nice line finish. And it's actually got more of a pewter effect as opposed to stainless, which can be a little sparkly. And then is there anything that's done to protect the finish? Lacquer on top, uh, it's, it's really the, the best choice. And uh, that'll stand up in a, like in a, in a house in someone's sort of a controlled environment right. as opposed to outside okay. for years and years. We need a dining room table. Would you make me a dining room yes, table in the I'd same be, style? Yes, I'd love okay, to. But I guess we'd have to use something a little thicker, yep. wouldn't we? Yep, every, every size is available, so, uh, you Sky's know. Sky's the limit? It is, rounds, uh, rectangulars, squares. Okay, now I know neither of these aren't the biggest challenges for you. Have you ever met a challenge you couldn't you couldn't tackle mm, yet? No, I don't think so. Nothing okay, I'm I'll gonna have to dream up yeah, something yeah, Nothing I'll admit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks, Calvin. Thank you. Coming up on Room Service, we check in on the apartment to uncover wood floors and the inspiration behind stylish stainless. Let's talk about what happens when you pull up wall-to-wall -wall broadloom. Well, sometimes you pull it back and find that the floors underneath aren't in great condition. Not the case here. We were so lucky. The floors underneath are gleaming golden oak parquet. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, if this apartment was actually a condominium and it was owned, I might actually recommend sanding and restaining these floors just to give it a more modern appeal, maybe in a dark walnut or in an ebony finish. However, this is a rental apartment, so we are gonna take what we've got, we are gonna be happy about it, they look great. Another thing is this place is so much brighter than it was. We took down those vertical blinds, that was the first thing I wanted to see come down. And as you can see, now we have bright daylight coming in. This is what I really love about drapes. The advantage of drapes is they're either open or they're closed, which means that during the daylight hours when privacy is not an issue, they can be left wide open to give it this airy feeling. Now, on that line of an airy feeling, I've sampled some paint colors over here. Always a good idea to sample your paint colors in advance. I'm going with a sort of smoky blue range. I've started out here, this is a silvery gray. Then I have another color here which has a little bit more green in it. And a third color, which I'm thinking about using as an accent color, which is more of that smoky, steely blue. As far as the dining room goes, we had some cracking problems on the wall. The paint was all peeling off. It was due to condensation on the concrete because that's what the walls are made of. So I put on a new sheet of drywall over top so that we'll have a good foundation for something I'm planning to do there, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. When I'm all done here, you are gonna believe me when I say that you can create dramatic impact without spending a fortune. There's nothing like a trip to the hardware store to make the details of a room come together. In this case, I went in search of hardware for the doors and I found it. As you can see, we have the same knobs that are on all these closet doors and they're definitely a little bit outdated. So what I found as a replacement was a brushed steel lever style handle, which is a little bit more contemporary than what's here now. If you're gonna replace your door knobs, you need to make sure that the style you choose comes in both a passage set, which has a handle on both sides, and also as a dummy, which may go on the closet doors. In this case, it's gonna cost me about $100 to replace all of the hardware, which is definitely worth it because this brushed steel element will add a touch of shimmer to our back wall of closets. 
Even if your space is devoid of a dining room, it doesn't mean you should be lacking in dining style. Industrial designer and modernist Helen Kerr is just the person to help. Her flatware collections, well known all over North America for their unique style as well as their affordable prices, stemmed from Helen's need to create clean, pure, yet functional objects for everyday life. I began uh, working as an industrial designer because I was very interested in the idea of art and technology put together. And the more I explored um, both of those aspects of design, the more interested I became in really modernism. Um, being able to have clean, sculptural, pure shapes that functioned really, really well. So almost all of the work that we do, whether it's furniture or flatware or uh, even something very technical, has that feeling to it. it. It's as simple as it's possible to be, given the materials and the processes that are involved. Once we've researched, we begin to conceptualize, which means that we uh, begin uh, creating objects, but at a very much an idea stage. And so we make um, hand-drawn sketches, computer-drawn sketches, and then we model things up in foam and wood models that we sculpt out before we actually get to the final uh, piece. And that's a way for us to practice and see whether or not it's going to be an appropriate solution. Almost all of the products that we design have a very sculptural quality to them, and so form is something that's really important to me. Um, anything that fits well into your hand, if it's going to be used um, in your hand, it, it needs to have that kind of very biomorphic shape. And so almost all of the things that we do, in some way, reference a human body. They've got connections like the webs in your fingers, and they're very rarely something that's just a geometric assemblage of parts, they're, they're much more fluid looking. From a technical point of view, we have to be very, very concerned about how much material is used and what the uh, capabilities of the factory are. And so that, that's always the piece that's hidden in, in the objects that you use every day is sometimes the, they look the way they do because that's the only way to make them. I hope when people see the cutlery that they just can't help themselves but pick it up. They're the kind of things that you just want to stroke and, and feel. They're less objects than they should be. They're very intimate. When you, when you take cutlery, you put it into your mouth, and there's, there's nothing that could be more intimate than putting something into your mouth. So it should be something that feels good. Next on Room Service, it's the dining room's time to shine. The painters have finished painting all of the walls, the ceiling, all of the smoky blue tones have turned out really well. Now I've taken over and I'm starting to apply a decorative treatment to this accent wall. This is the wall in the dining room. And the dining room table that I've had made is made of an inch and a half square burnished steel piping and it's all welded together. So what I wanted to do is create a square technique on this wall. I'm going to do it using silver leaf. So inch and a half squares of silver leaf will just create a little bit of accent on this wall. What I've done is I've started out by spacing my squares 16 inches apart both horizontally and vertically. And what I've done is I run a continuous band of tape from top to bottom. Now that's to make sure that all of my little squares end up staying perfectly lined up. This is really important when you're doing a decorative technique. I'm using low tack painter's masking tape and I started by measuring it all out with a measuring tape and a level and a pencil. So this is one of those things that is nine tenths preparation Operation and one tenth execution. Okay, that's my last square. The next step is start applying the leaf. 
I'm using, this is water-based gold leaf sizing and it looks like thinned out white glue and I'm just gonna apply it using a small foam brush. I wanna make sure before applying it that there's no place for that leaf sizing to uh, bleed underneath my tape line because I wanna make sure that these silver squares have nice sharp edges on them. And I'll just simply apply a little bit of the sizing on the inside of that square. Very simple. Okay, so that's the last square, and now the next step is to just let this dry for about 20 minutes. It will become tacky, and it'll stay tacky for about 24 hours. So if you were doing a large room, you'd have lots of open working time. I'll set this aside and clean that up. I'll let this dry, and then I'll peel back the tape, and we'll be ready to move on to silver leaf. Silver leafing is sold in packages of 25 sheets that are six inches square. Now that's a lot larger than I need considering the fact that my squares are only one and a half inches. So I am going to just cut my squares into quadrants. So this allows me just to work with a much smaller size and I'll have far less waste. Now I think these you can just feel it, the squares are a little bit tacky, which means I'm ready to go. Lay the leaf in place. One sheet at a time. Over the sizing. Flipping back as you go. And you can use your brush. You wanna try not to touch it with your fingers because if you do, it may tarnish over time. Now that I've got my leaf attached to the sizing, the last step is to make sure that you burnish it in place and then you can use your brush and it'll take off any of the excess. This is sort of like the Las Vegas stage of the project where you have silver dust flying everywhere. finished removing all the loose silver by burnishing with the brush, I'm wiping over it with a soft rag just to make sure there's no little bits of silver left on the wall. At this point, if you wanted to protect it, you could cover it with a coat of urethane. I am going to leave it just as it is because I like the matte of the wall against the sheen of the silver. And now that this accent wall is completed, you can see that it adds a graphic modern complement of steel and silver. Izamu Noguchi was a prolific Japanese-American sculptor. He designed stage sets, plazas, playgrounds, landscapes, and furniture. But Noguchi may be best known for his Akari light sculptures. These functional icons of mid-20th century design play with luminous form and symmetry in many ways. The handmade paper shades with their bamboo ribbing may be perched on delicate metal feet, pinned to the wall, or suspended. Exquisitely understated and a little bit whimsical, it's no wonder Akari lights are still in production and on the A-list for design aficionados. Next on Room Service, we light the way to mid-century living with style. My work here is all done, so I thought I'd kick back, enjoy the view and the atmosphere. But I can't exactly take credit for everything in this room, though I am quite pleased with how it's turned out. Michael actually had a number of neat pieces to start with. The Barcelona chairs were his, he owned them already. Same goes for the Wassily chair, another chair in chrome and leather, and even the dining room chairs. All it took was a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of vision to pull this place together. First off, I think it looks so much larger now that that old broad loom is gone and the vertical blinds are also gone and replaced. Now there was a bit of discussion about the paint color when it first happened because there was some question about whether it might be a little bit on the baby blue side. 
the colors weren't necessarily working when they first went on, and they were kind of, it was, it was hard to tell what color it was. It's always important to see how the color looks when everything comes together, instead of jumping to a decision too soon before you've seen everything. You have to relax with the process. If you trust a designer to, to do something in your space, you have to just kind of go with it, and eventually you, you sort of clue into what they're trying to pull together for you. I'm pleased to report that now that the room has come together, it just acts as a soft sort of gray-blue backdrop rather than appearing baby blue. Now, about the sofa, this is a new sofa with a much lower line than the one that was originally here. We really needed to go with something that had a lower arm and more of a horizontal, low feeling to it, rather than something boxy, really to complement these classic modern pieces that were already here. You'll remember those tables that I picked up when I went out shopping, and now I've added a slab of marble on top of them. The marble is actually something that I rescued from an old hearth in front of a fireplace that was removed. All I did was have them cut down and repolished, and they are stunning. So great that, in fact, I believe they're Michael's favorite piece in the room. I love the shiny marble top and the fact that there aren't too many striations in it, so you really do see like a lot of white on the, on the stainless steel. It looks fantastic. Now, if you ask me what my favorite piece is, I'm going to take you over to take a look at the dining room. The best part about this, I think, is the accent wall with the little silver leaf squares on it. I just love the way that the silver catches the light no matter what time of day it is. And the benefit of this space is that we've really created a functional dining room out of a space that was unused before and found a great home for these chairs. They're set off underneath a glass top table made by the same people who made our side tables. I love those so much, I decided to just keep going on the theme. It seems to all be about square proportions in this room. So we've gone with a larger steel and then it's topped with a 3 8 thick glass tempered tabletop for safety. Above it, yet another square, a hanging Noguchi lamp suspended on a stainless steel pole. And when the light is on in the evening, it just really creates a warm glow. What an incredible effect. It's ready for entertaining. There's just one hit of circle that we added to help soften out all the rest of the space, and that is the cart. Again, it is more of a modern line. It's got a combination of chrome and three black shelves on wheels. This makes it an ideal piece for entertaining it can be used as a serving piece, it can be pulled over to be used as a side table, and it just complements all the pieces in the room. Well, now that we're finished, we've created a really stark contrast of the black and the chrome, of the cream and the charcoal. It's subdued, it's cosmopolitan, and most importantly, it's chic. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.